What is going on, football fans? Just want to get a quick video up on the page as news has come out about a former New York Giant, Damon Snacks Harrison. Damon Snacks Harrison, of course, we acquired in the 2016 season when the Giants had all that money to spend in free agency, and he was a big, big acquisition for the Giants. Of course, that was the year that we really revamped our defense. We brought in Janoris Jenkins, we brought in Snacks, we brought in Olivier Vernon, and they really helped that defense that year. That defense, the second half of the season that year, was arguably the best defense in football, and they carried that team to the playoffs when we went 11-5, and five. and Snacks was a huge part of that. Um, he probably was the most important player on that defense. You could certainly make that argument. It was either him, uh, Landon Collins, or Janoris Jenkins. They were all great, and him and Jenkins were the driving forces behind sweeping the Cowboys that year because he was able to clog up the middle, and you really saw his value. Elliott tore everybody else apart, but the Giants were able to sweep the Cowboys in large part due to him because Elliott couldn't get going against us that year. So he's one of, if not the best run stuffers in football, and he's still very good, which is why Giants fans were upset last year when we traded him uh, for a fifth-round pick to the Detroit Lions. Now, the reason we only got a fifth-round pick is because of his age, it's, and it's because of his contract. You know, he makes a lot of money for a guy that's only on the field a little more than half the time, uh, as good as he is at what he does. He's due to make $6.75 million this year and about $9 million the following year. He carries a $3.2 million dead cap hit, so he certainly won't be cut this year. He could be cut next year when he carries about a million dollar dead cap hit. But what I wanted to talk about is he is creating headaches for the Detroit Lions. And I'm not saying... He's doing anything wrong in the NFL. The players have to use what they can to try to get the money while they can get it. But I think it's a foolish decision, and I'm glad the New York Giants don't have to deal with this. You, I mean, he missed all of OTAs. Now he's sitting out mini camp, and he, he forfeited $250,000 for OTAs. He's going to forfeit another almost 100000 if he sits out all three days for mandatory mini camp, and it's to get a contract. I mean, this guy's 30 years old. He's going to be 31 next year, and by the time he hits the open market, he'll be 32 for a nose tackle. I mean, he's not going to get a huge contract, and I don't think it's worth sitting out for uh, to forfeit three, four $400,000 on a $6.7 million contract. I just don't think it's smart, and we saw what Le'Veon Bell did last year with the Steelers, and that didn't work out too well for him. Uh, he forfeited an entire year. He forfeited millions of dollars, and he got probably the same contract he would have gotten when he hit the open market. I, I, I think he forfeited away a lot of money, and if Snacks Harrison decides to do the same thing, I think he'd be making the same mistake. Uh, Snacks Harrison's a great player. He was a great New York Giant, but you're starting to see why the Giants got rid of the players that they did. Um, of course, Beckham's doing the same thing. Now, he did show up, in fairness to Beckham, uh, reports came out that he did show up to mandatory minicamp, but he missed nine out of the ten OTAs with the Browns, a new team. Uh, you would think he'd be trying to uh, develop some chemistry over there. And the same thing with Snacks. You know, I know he played, you know, roughly half a season with them last year, but you would think he'd try to be a leader and a guy and... And the Giants are not hearing any of this. The New York Giants, everything, everybody's there. Everybody's buying in. Um, and it's nice for a change to have a locker room that's not torn. And, um, you know, and everybody said it. Justin Tuck came out this week and said that. He said that last year uh, the Giants locker room was in shambles. And it's a much better culture this year as the Giants are starting to build camaraderie. And you're seeing all these former Giants continue to cause headaches for their new team. So I think we're all starting to see why the Giants made some of the moves that they did. Um, I wish Snacks nothing but the best. Hopefully everything works out. Maybe he gets an extension. I don't think he will uh, because of his age. You know, he doesn't have much leverage here. Uh, 32 in the NFL, which is one hell at the open market, is a senior citizen. You know, not a senior citizen, but you don't have a lot of leverage there. I very much doubt the Lions are going to give him an extension. He still has two years left on his deal in which he's going to make what, about $15, $16 million to play nose tackle where you're not even on the field more than 50 60% of the time? I think Snacks is foolish um, for doing this. I think he should go out there with his new team and be a leader. And I think he's throwing away money. I don't think he has any leverage. I don't think, he, I don't think he's going to gain anything from this. But like I said, I wish him the best. Wanted to get a quick video up on it um, as I'm just glad the Giants are not dealing with these headaches. And I'm glad that, you know, this team seems like a stronger unit. Now, we may not be as talented. It may take a few years to get to where we want to get. Next year, of course, we have $100,000 to spend. And we'll hopefully have more good draft picks and we draft well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad that this is beyond us. The culture is getting better in Giants land. And, um, you know, hopefully there's bright things in our future. But as always, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.